Connor, please read me the uh, foot page number. Uh, 1047. And the, uh, what, no, is number 10? Yes. Read me the problem. No idea. Half of x equals 2x squared minus x plus 5. 2x squared minus x plus 5 at 0, 5. And it, was it find the uh, equation of the tangent line? Possibly. What were the directions? It was a two-part thing. Um, so I have oh, Lord. I okay. Have a okay, let's get this going quickly here. 1047. And we are. I don't know, it's two parts here. Let's see what they are. Number 10. Find the slope of the tangent line, find the slope equation of the graph. Okay, first thing. Now, we're finding the derivative. f prime of x in general, okay, um, is the limit. As delta x approaches 0, and we're calling delta x h now, of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. Very quickly, for those of you who weren't here yesterday, this is the difference quotient, which we use to find the slope between two points on the function at the beginning of the year. Only now, h is our delta x. It's being shrunk to nothing. It gives us the slopes of tangent lines to a curve. This is a parabola. For this particular function, are you ready? Take a deep breath because we're about to do a lot of algebra. 2 times x plus h squared minus x plus h plus 5 minus 2x squared minus x plus 5 all over h. I use a darker marker. This one won't last to the end of this problem. Or will it? Or will it? So you're just plugging x plus h into everything. x plus h into everything Wherever once, and then subtracting the original function. Wait. Just what we did with the difference quotient. This never has a chance of ne like not being what we... Okay, like, how can I explain this? Like, this is always going to be zero, like, no matter what we have as f of x, because the stupid formula is minusing two... It'll always be zero over zero. Correct. That's so obnoxious. Until we do some algebraic manipulations. Today we'll talk about why that is. But I'm, I don't want to have to rush that, so let me rush this instead. x squared plus 2hx plus h squared. Uh, I mean, I go ahead and distribute. Yeah. 4hx plus 2h squared minus x minus h. Bless you. Plus 5 minus 2x squared plus x minus 5. Is that all correct? Oh, uh, yeah, I'm assuming so. <laughs> now let's see what should start to happen. 2x squared minus 2x squared. Minus x plus x plus 5 minus 5. Every remaining term should have an h in it. And Wait, what you know, happened? I thought this would a, cancel out. This um, not everything. Everything without an h cancels out. You should have an h left in every term. Why? So you can cancel uh, that's kind of the way it always works with polynomials. We're going to go tomorrow, well, Friday, we'll go into a little more, once the seniors are gone, we'll go into a little more why that is. <laughs> okay, follow me over here, please. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Okay, so what's left now is, for guys, what did I do that I would have to take points off for that I told you guys about oh, yesterday? Limit. 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 Come Jerk. On. Please. Must write this every line. Really? I didn't move the camera back for that, sorry. <laughs> yeah, all right. For our viewers at home, must write the limit at the beginning of every line. So what's left in the numerator is 4hx plus 2h squared minus h. Really? I thought it was plus. No. No, because it's no, the minus right, from here. Right. What's the problem? That is correct. Why no, can't you just pull correct. out an h? Okay, over h. And now I'm going to do that. Wow. Okay. The limit is h approaches 0 of 4x plus 2h <coughs> minus 1 times h over h. And we did this with the difference quotient at the beginning of the year, and the h's always cancel nicely on polynomials. And you get the limit is h approaches 0 of... 4x plus 2h minus 1. Yeah. Now, the limit, like I said yesterday, is like a dog on a leash. If you can let h, let the dog off the leash oh. too soon. If you let 
h equals zero, you will get zero over zero in every step of the problem up until this one. Now if we let h equals zero, what do we get? Negative one. That's four x is also not affected. Four x minus one. Okay? So now four x minus one is our f prime. This is our formula for generating derivatives to this and this and only this parabola. So do we plug in the, the zero? The point was zero five, so we're looking for f prime of zero, which is four times zero minus one, which is just negative one. This is the slope of a tangent. Pardon? Because we let h equal zero. That's where the two h went. So it's like we performed the operation. It's like taking a square root of something. You don't draw the radical sign afterwards. Um, so now f prime of zero is negative one. So we are looking for a line y equals negative 1x plus b that passes through the point 0, 5. So you just draw the line? Uh, don't even draw it. Just say 5 equals negative 1 times 0 plus b. So b is 5. So y equals negative x plus 5 is the line which barely touches this parabola at the point zero 05. Okay? Yes. That is part, this is the answer to part A of that question. Find the derivative at that point. This is part B. Find the equation of the tangent line that hits it at that point. All right, you guys with me? Wait, so what is that equation, the 4x minus 1, what is that? This is f prime of x. Could have written that in there. Thank you, Connor. This is f prime of x. That is your general derivative. This is a formula where if you plug in x values, it tells you the slopes of tangent lines barely touching that parabola. You can put in any x you want. It only works for that one parabola, but it works for all infinite number of points on that parabola. If you want to know the slope of a line that barely touches the parabola when x is 5, put in 5. It's 19. If you want to know the slope of a tangent line that barely touches the parabola at one half, you put in one half. It's going to be four times one half minus one, which will be one. That'll tell you all the slopes of the tangent lines that touch it. Okay. All right. Now, Connor, can you do me a favor and put it back on this board? <laughs> and now. We need to apply the derivative a little bit, which means today we're going to talk about, in 518, 2010, we are going to talk about instantaneous